Alright, alright, here we go. Episode 1 of the Realm, the Southlands Introduction Module for our Fruit Designs number 2 series. We're gonna hit B. Let's go. Ahem. Yes, hello, I mean. Greetings, traveler. Your journeys have led you to the realm, a world of many worlds, a place of infinite possibility and myriad imaginations. Whether you are new to the realm or an old hand, campaigns begin here. All games currently available in the realm series are on the overland maps that come in this design. We at the realm have been very busy updating and preparing this little package. We have also prepared a series of short adventures. Each of these may be found the old-fashioned way by walking about the maps and stumbling upon adventure where adventure lies. Or, for those of less patience, you may cut directly to the adventures as you see fit. A brief description is provided for each vignette. Well, off with you now. We have work to be done. And landscapes to paint. Work at the realm is never done, you know. Off with you, and happy adventuring. Hmm. Introduction to the realm. Welcome, traveler. This land is known as the realm. It is a sort of nexus point for imagination, where the creative labors of many minds come to fruition together. Bits of many worlds form this place. You'll find cities from Greyhawk and mountain ranges from the much more widely known Forgotten Realms. If you look closely, you may find some of your world, and if you're not careful, you may find some of Ravenloft. Nonetheless, the realm has a history and a culture all its own. Trade goes on between mighty nations, which strive to reign supreme at the same time struggle to survive the rising tide of the humanoids in the east. Once, not long ago, men, elves, dwarves, gnomes, and halflings lived together peacefully, if not harmoniously harmoniously. Their unbroken alliance allowed them to beat down the chaotic and evil humanoids, drive them away. With the monsters underground, peace flourished. A number of skillful, skillful rulers came to the forefront of each race, rulers who saw that they could do the most through compromise and trust. Generations prospered. But in the time, but in time, the threat of the humanoids was forgotten. The men grew arrogant, the dwarf grew stubborn, the elves and gnomes grew reclusive as halflings grew miser miserly. The fragile bonds of peace broke. Wars erupted across the land. Men drew lines and picked sides, buying allies among the demi-humans to sway the tide of battle. Demons were conjured by black necromancers in the depths of Foul Dragon Spear Castle, forcing the nations to unite again for a time. But soon the necromancers were defeated, their hellspawn bound. And wars among the nations began anew, despite their weakened stature. Then, into the scene of squalor and squabbling came an unrelenting tide of humanoids, goblins, orcs, bugbears, ogres, giants, all back for vengeance over their defeat, their ancestors felt. Humanity is locked in its own wars between nations, Runas, Specularum, Bloodstone, Eeyore. None will accept the aid of a sworn enemy again. The demi-human nations are too weak, too scattered to force an alliance. Everyone is too busy tending his own doorstep to protect his ho own homeland. Unity and trust are all but gone. Men have begun to consort with humanoids, forming armies to conquer nations. And into this troubled world comes one small band of heroes, six young people who are willing to build bridges between nations and will not allow chaos to reign. These are your heroes, but where to begin? Close in on, we want the south. The Southlands have survived the rise of the humanoids mostly due to the buffer and black of Blackweed Swamp in the east and north. The majority of trade is conducted either up the River Trent or through the gnomes of the Veilstone Peaks. The human settlements on the eastern side of the Veilstones pays fealty to the Count of Eeyore, south and east. The Count provides protection to all in the Southlands who pay his taxes. All but the small cluster of villages southwest of his city have little choice but to obey his every command. This small cluster, though, in the shadow of the southern volcanoes, are beginning to thrive on their own. The largest of the group, the Port of Saltmarsh, conducts growing trade with lands further south, downriver. Growing off of success of Saltmarsh and in the nearby villages of Lorillon, Dauphin, and Hamlet, all prosperous farm communities. Of all the lands of the realm, the most likely place to start a campaign would be in the south. Here, a party could grow to power battling isolated bands of the minions of evil. Then they could move on to greater glory. Parties interested in a campaign in the Southland should look into these adventure hooks. Game 26. 
Where humanoids are not a threat, mankind fills the void. Brigands burn and pillage caravans near the village of Hamlet. A clever band of heroes could end the threat. Game 27. A commission has begun has been offered to get to the root of the haunting of the old alchemist's house north of Saltmarsh. A chance of some easy money or an early grave. Game 35. Someone or something is raising the dead in the mausoleum of Dauphin Village. A party brave enough to face the walking dead could enter the mausoleum of Meum and leave he heroes. Alright, that sounds pretty cool, but let's go through all of them. Let's go to the east. The Eastlands prepare the most rugged warriors and most battle-minded mages and priests in order to stem the ever-rising tide of humanoids in the wilderness. Many in the west believe them to be fighting a lost war. The hardy men of the famous keep on the borderlands fight every day to hold on to the bridge crossing the river Shrill. Just east of them lies the dreaded Caves of Chaos, a constant threat to civilization. North of the keep on the borderlands is Guido Guido's Fort, the farthest bastion of humanity into the wilderness. Small garrison in the fort the small garrison in the fort faces certain doom should the humanoids surrounding them ever organize. South of the keep on the borderlands is the small tribal community of Chala, and west the road leads to the city of Specularum, where nobles try not to cringe at the thought of humanoids on their doorstep. Even more deadly than the westlands, the borderlands to the east are a rugged, deadly place to start a campaign. Forging a legend in this place of countless humanoids would be like cutting a sculpture in sand. Nevertheless, those who find the danger of the Borderlands attractive should look into these game hooks. Game 02. Could six succeed where legions could not? The party takes the commission to infiltrate the Caves of Chaos and find the being powerful enough to unite the chaotic humanoids. Game 05. Rivaling factions within the city of Specularum threaten the sanctity of the place which maintains the Borderland defenses. The party must save the city from itself. Wow, this is more interesting than I thought. I'm... Think, I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing the South, but these other ones sound interesting too. The West. The Westlands of the realm struggle to survive against the overwhelming presence of the humanoids to the North and East. While the great cities of Unrest, of Ernst, and Specularum still stand, their positions are tenuous. Both cities lie east of the river Rustanian, and they both feel the threat of humanoid ru ruin growing ever closer. Traders from Ernst who sail down river come first to the small fishing village of Klein. The road west from Klein leads to the crossroads of the realm. The road west leads to Two Lakes Vale, where a dark cloud of black necromancy cuts off communication with the outside world. The road north from the crossroad leads to the castle Dugan and the neighboring towns of Stalinford, Lindale, and Crownholm. The road south leads to the southlands of the realm. West of Castle Dugan are the Galenus Mountains, which stand barrier against the wild barren desert. It would be possible, though not easy, to start a band of adventurers in the Westlands. Death waits at every turn for those unconscious or unprepared. Anyone wanting to start a campaign in the West, though, should think about a band who would respond to these adventure hooks. Game 6. Lurdium Arkays is a reclusive wizard who lives south of Specularum. He wears a band. He hears of a band of young adventurers who might be willing to undertake a well-paying quest. Game 07. The party arrives in the village of Klein to hear that a small tribe of humanoids has raided the village and stolen a sacred relic from the local church. Game 8. The party is in Stalinford for the annual King's Festival when a band of marauding orcs comes rampaging out of the Galenus Mountains and kidnaps a local priest. Let's finally close in on the north. The Northlands of the realm are the most rugged and deadly. Here the wilderness encroaches on civilization with humanoids emboldened by rumors of demons breaking their bonds in the ancient ruins of Dragonspear Castle. The great city of Ernst, east of the fjord over the river Rostanian, wastes away under the onslaught of these pillaging monsters with little help from the northern lands of Bruna. North of Ernst on the river is the fortress city of Daggerford. The garrison here is supported by both Ernst and Runa in their mutual desire to keep the forces of chaos on the east side of the river. West of the river in the shadow of the great icebreaker peaks is the mighty city of Bruna itself, ruled by the noble Stephen of Bruna and his advisor Xanathon the northern kingdom is still the grandest of the realm. Dwarves trade with men and the two united strive to hold off the giants in, of the mountain ranges. Ugh. There are no places in the north for a band of adventurers to start out if they desire a career of any length. The giants, demons, and humanoids of the north wilderness test the mettle of the most seasoned veterans. Alright, let's exit. Explore the realm. Where does fate take you? South.
Here stands the small village of Wake village of Wakeholm. The people here are quiet, hard working folk with no time for adventures or the trouble they bring. However, while you're in Wakeholm, it is possible that you encounter an elfin captain interested in hiring adventurers for a dangerous but profitable voyage to the Isle of Teki Nuraria in the South Sea. If you are interested in meeting with this elf, you should load Game 33, the UA conversion of Module X8, Drums on Fire Mountain. From here, you can also procure passage of the river to an undeveloped village of Chala, which stands on the eastern borderlands, where the, hu where the humanoids threaten to break into civilization. Do you sail north? No. I guess we have to. Yes. The little village of Chala, nested on the banks of the river Shrill, has prospered for generations, but now the city faces misfortune, pestilence, and decay because the icon which brought it prosperity has been stolen. All the clues suggest the object was carried into the Blackweed Swamp. Will you be the one to bring it back? If you are willing to help these folk, load Game 18, the UA conversion of Module GA2 Swamp Light. It is designed for characters level 7 to 9. Also from Chala, you can mount an expedition against the Slaver's Kingdom, which is rising in the depths of the Eastlands. To do so, load Game 1, the UA conversion of Dungeon Modules A1 to 4, the area of the Slave Lords. Only an able-bodied band of adventurers of level 7 to 9 should attempt this endeavor. From Chali, you can sail north to East Bridge or south to the village of Wakeholm. East Bridge. You sail north to the East Bridge. The famous keep on the borderlands. Here the finest and darkest of humanity stand for their own purposes against the rising tide of humanoids, and now something more evil is rising in the caves of chaos. Do you dare face the borderlands from a base in the keep? If so, load game 2, the UA conversion of Dungeon Module B2, the keep on the borderlands. It's for characters level 1 to 5. Also from the keep on the borderlands, you can mount an expedition against the Slaver's Kingdom, which is rising in the depths of the Eastlands. To do so, yeah, we know about that. And so, after you travel and made a name for yourself, it is possible that the legendary hero Raythor contacts you to return to Keep on the Borderlands. To find out what could bring such a person personage to ask for help, load origi original realm game R1, Raythor's prize, for characters level 7 to 9. What town is this? Only the mighty river Shrill separates the soldiers of Guidio's fort from the mysterious mountain. Will you be the first to return, or will you fall prey to the horror on the hill? Guidio's fort is stuck between the hill and the river and the humanoids of the Eastlands. Will you help them? Load game 34, the UA conversion of module B5, Horror on the Hill, for characters levels 3 to 5. Also from Guidio's fort, you can mount an expedition against the Slaver's Kingdom. Okay. Another option from Guidio's involves a search for the hidden tower wizard known as Kestanimir. Unknown wealth could still remain in the old mage's home. You mount the search for this treasure, you should load game 11, the UA conversion of Dungeon Module C3, The Lost Tower of Castanamir, designed for characters level 2 to 4. This way across the river. You stand at the East Bridge, which marks the boundary of what is optimistically known as civilization. You could procure passage south to the underdeveloped village of Shala. Do you take the ship? No. Let's go this way. You stop at the inn known as Dalesin's Rest. While there, it is possible that you may become invaded in a conflict between archmages. If you want to test your mettle against such foes, then load game Alep 14, the UA conversion of module CM8, the Endless Stair. It is for characters level 15 to 20. Hmm, I can't go any further. Camp? The party makes camp.
Alright, how do I get out of here? Are we done exploring the realm? How do I go back, I wonder? Oh, I can move. Here stands a small inn. While you are here, it is possible to encounter an old sage with a quest to offer involving a magical spell gone awry in the swamps to the south. If you would like to meet with the old sage, load game 22, the UA conversion of Dungeon Module 17, Baltrans Beacon. It's an adventure for characters levels 4 to 6. Okay, so we move with the mouse. You stand on the outskirts of Vendere, the seat of power for the Count Eor of Eor. Ruthless brigands have brought a halt to the trade between the land of Eor and its neighbors. The military forces sent by the Count of Eeyore to eliminate the cutthroats have mysteriously vanished. Even worse, there are rumors of an ancient evil once more abroad in the land. If you would like to attempt to succeed where armed troops have failed, load game 20, the UA conversion of Dungeon Module 12, Tomb of the Lizard King, adventure for levels 5 to 7. Now I can't move anymore. Now I have to use the... As you make your camp late in the night along the forest of roadside, you're confronted by a dead man who begs you to take up the sword where he failed in his mission against a fell necromancer. A ghost story is a mini-adventure for characters level 2 to 4. Does this adventure interest you? No. The small city of Grace Haven is having trouble with thieves. A powerful burglar is made off with three magical weapons, each an artifact in its own right. But some say that a darker evil is to blame. If you would like to accept the commission, retrieve the three magical artifacts you should load game 24 the ua conversion i miss i missed that Let's see that again you should load game 24 the ua conversion for dungeon module s2 white plume mountain intervention for characters level five to seven The village of Hamlet has grown up around a crossroads in a woodland. Once far from any important activity, it became embroiled in the struggle between gods and demons when the Temple of Elemental Evil arose. Luckily for its inhabitants, the temple and its evil hordes were destroyed a decade ago, but Hamlet still suffers from incursions of bandits and strange monsters. If you are interested in helping the village of Hamlet, you should load Game 26, the UA conversion of Dungeon Module T1-4, to the Temple of Elemental Evil, an adventure for characters levels 1-9. to can't wait to do that one. You stand on the outskirts of the small mill village of Dauphin. Rumors persist of trouble with the village dead rising from the local cemetery and mausoleum. If you are interested in ending the village Dauphin and exploring these rumors, load game 37, the UA conversion for F5, Lords of Darkness Skeletons. This is an adventure for characters level 1 to 3. That's where we're going to start, actually, I believe. You stand on the outskirts of the small village of Laurelon. The quiet people of this friendly place harbor no dark secrets or terrible evils. It is a quiet, peaceful village. Laurelon is a possible starting location for an adventure involving the village of Dauphin. If you would like to investigate the rumors of the dead rising in Dauphin, load game 35, an adventure for levels 1 to 3. That's where we're going to be starting. You stand on a hilltop over the port city of Saltmarsh. A commission from the ward of the city will take you to a desolate and abandoned alchemist home standing alone on a cliff looking out over the sea. If you're interested in finding out more about the alchemist haunted home, load game 27, the UA conversion for Dungeon Module U1, the sinister secret of Saltmarsh, an adventure for character level 1 to 3. It would also be possible to procure passage on a ship sailing downriver to the Great Southern Sea. In the midst of the sea is the infamous Isle of Dread, where an experienced band of expert adventurers may find glory. 
If you are interested in getting a ship from the port in Saltmarsh, you should load game 29, the UA conversion for Dungeon Module X1, The Isle of Dread. Designed for characters level 3 to 7. So we've got to kind of go through this again, but I want to check out all the areas. I definitely want to go into Temple of Elemental Evil, Salt Marsh. I want to do all that. White Plume Mountain. Let's see what's over here. Wolover's Keep has long been the haven of the Wolover line of alchemist mages. Now, since the last Wolover's disappearance, there's a bit of concern over strange abominations of nature appearing in the region. If you're interested in entering the Veilstone Peaks region and exploring the strange happenings, be prepared. Load game 15, the UA conversion of Dungeon Module FA2 Nightmare Keep for levels 18 to 20. I don't know what these... That's a mini adventure, but it's too high level. So I have to go through this again, it's okay. Stop at the end known as Dalesons Rest. Okay, we know about that. Let's see what's further down this way. A small cluster of homes lies in the forest south of the main trail. Here dwell families who have staked a claim in the forest of the Beastlands and will not surrender their homes to the evils ranging about them. Yet evil has come in the night to the shadowed streets and a child has vanished. A wandering a wandering hag has been captured and is held for questioning, but there's no sign of the child. If you would seek out the missing child, then play Witch Hunt, a mini-adventure for characters level 4 to 6. Do you partake in the hunt? No. You enter the Westlands, where civilization is still maintained through a struggling grasp. Alright, I'm not going to go through the, um, through the Westlands. We're going to focus our attention on the South. And, uh, next time, we are going to load the Dauphin Village module, the Skeletons. So stay tuned for that, and we'll actually get some gameplay going, and I will see you then. Stay tuned, it's going to be real good.